Hello and welcome to this video for Electric Pages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we are here in Electronica 2024 in Munich and I can say it's been an absolutely fantastic event and I'm joined by a very interesting chap, Jochen from Delta. Thank you Thank ever you. so much for having us today. Welcome here on the booth. Yeah. Brilliant. And first question as always, could you just explain to the audience who you are and what you do? Yes. As you said, my name is Jochen. I'm working with Delta Electronics in Germany and we are making all type of power supplies. Yeah. This is the core of Delta. In our branch, we are specialized on charging systems um, for industrial vehicles. So we are charging the batteries of all these moving robots, forklift trucks yeah. and everything that's in the industry. Here we have specialized on a wireless charging system, which mm -hmm. is a new thing to go. We have here a one kilowatt system that is mainly focused on AGVs, little AMRs, and all yep. these smaller robots. Um, it works like a normal charging system. The exception is we don't have any plug and any cable, any open contacts, which means mm. it's perfectly for 24 seven operations, for automatic applications, where you don't have any operator to use. The functionality is quite easy. As soon as the robot approaches, with its two coils, the communication starts and the battery starts to charge. You see inside we have the charger that indicates the charge in progress is moving on. Here we can place some object and you'll see on our display exactly the charging currents, the charging voltages and you can fairly um, um, control the whole thing. As soon as your charging is done, the robot will leave and the charging brakes, also you will see it on the values as they fall down. This is a perfect um, operation mode for um, opportunity charging, which mm. means you can use any five minutes of um, inoperability, uh, no, in, of... Um, downtime, in, essentially. Down, yeah. Downtime, yeah, yes, yeah, downtime, yeah. Um, that the robot can go charge forward, backward. This will reduce the required battery sizes and makes the system very economic. So Now, my first question, wireless charging is an interesting topic because I hear people talk about wireless charging in, 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 in sort of the spaces of EVs, but it's interesting that you mentioned specifically industrial systems and I can see where this conversation is going to go because my first question is, what are the biggest challenges that you see engineers facing when trying to design or implement wireless charging in these kind of applications? The biggest challenges for the application is um, you need a more or less a proper navigation mm. that, that you find your charger. Line so up your, the lineup must be good, so the robot must move on. Um, on the other side, we don't have any big challenges because it's a full charger. Mm. So the communication between is done automatically. Mm. We don't have any um, manual um, or um, direct contacts in yep. between. And so you so, don't, so you're, not, you're not moving two vehicles to, to each other sort of thing with a, with a connector trying to touch each other. You, yes. you just sort of... We have a yep. certain range where that it must be met. You can do it yep. by a GPS or mm -hmm. by any type of navigation to line in. Mm -hmm. And all the rest is done by the charger. Mm -hmm. And this has a very nice data transfer from mm -hmm. primary to secondary side that um, the energy transfer is there. So that this means that you really don't face uh, uh, any big challenges. This is all IP65, which means you can go outdoors, indoors, you can have rough environments with a lot of um, water or well, well, that's the advantage dust. Of, that's the advantage of wireless. You can have this in completely sealed. Yes. And it, it's not like it's not going to work because it's, it's you, electromagnetic induction. You so even it's... can have it behind a plastic yeah, exactly. shield. So that makes it also open for underwater or on the water applications. We have some clients who are doing oh, some cool. USVs, these unmanned um, oh, that's very, sea oh, vehicles. Oh, you can do that, can't you? Of course, yes. yes. So that you have these water drones, yeah. some people doing cleaning robots for farming, they some people doing, hose them down. doing um, surveillance robots for big areas. So there's uh, plenty of opportunities as long as we have a battery to charge. So this is the only challenge. Now, one question I was going to ask you was about the efficiency of wireless charging. But the thing is, though, when you, when I, and I think this is probably something that is very important for engineers to realize that in an application like this, efficiency is probably not going to be as important because this is about allowing robots to quickly connect, charge, and disconnect. So you don't want to have like 
uh, mating cycles, uh, mate, uh, sorry, mating cycles of cables, and you're not and you're not kind of looking for uh, uh, it, 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 the efficiency is not going to break this application. It's it's that it needs to be wireless so that it can disconnect and connect freely. This is completely comparable to a standard industrial battery charger. We have efficiency values of around 92 to 95 percent on a wireless system. Yes, it's also from the grid to the battery poles. So it's the whole system, yes. And uh, normally the people have these uh, experience from their wireless phone chargers yeah. that half of energy is lost yeah, basically, yeah. to and somewhere. It's, Here it's absolutely comparable to any type of um, traditional cable-bound wired chargers. And this makes it so, um, yeah, so it's a great solution to have it like this. So these, even the bigger the systems go, this is our smallest system with one kilowatt. What's your biggest We system? have systems up to 75 kilowatt. The higher the, the power goes, the higher the efficiency even is, yeah. 75 kilowatt you use for small trucks. Okay, so I'm just going to make a, a, a quick point to the audience, right? Up until this point, I've always been, an, I'll be honest with you, I've been a complete skeptic mm -hmm. of wireless charging on EVs, but with 92%, 92% efficiency, up to 75 kilowatts, that could work in an EV. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But at the moment, we are focused on, on the industrial application. We have a nice grid, we have safe electricity. Um, there are some standardization points to are you clear sure up. You, are you sure you only want to be focused on it? Because <laughs> this, is, this, this is absolutely fantastic. So, you, I'm still, I don't, okay, let's, let's, let's start with the first point. How did you get 92% efficiency? Uh, this is our secret, but we can't tell you. Uh, <laughs> so this is, is um, ex extremely um, harmonized systems. Yeah, yeah. When you look at your phone charger, it's only a coil and some wire and that's it. And that's the problem. Here, here you have a lot of more everything magic. Is, everything, uh, everything is yours essentially. So yes. you're not just designing the input power supply, you've got the wireless charging uh, uh, panels and then you've got the charger inside. It's, it's, so it's kind of like, it's the whole family of, of solutions. It's all done with. by Delta. So we have our own engineers to do the power electronics. We have our own engineers for the ferrites. We have our own engineers for mm. all the software stuff. And, and, like, we, and we uh, manufacture all in our own factories. So we have the full development, production line, yeah. logistics, everything is in our hand. Mm. So this makes it always stable and safe on the production line for supply, mm. but also technology-wise that we can move it to all these systems. So out of curiosity, so why is it that you focus first on, industri on industrial small applications like, uh, like, like the, the industrial robots? Why? why why is it starting there and then, are you, will you, would you eventually go to EVs, do you think? Um, I think the EV is also somewhere on the spot, I don't know. But we have started now with the industrial mm. because it's a little more, let's say, um, standardized. I, because I we, stay, we yeah. stay in one industrial area with one warehouse, for example. The warehouse computer is controlling the robots, mm. the robots can go to the charging. So it's more, let's say, a, a closed system. And I if think we go to EVs, you are in the open field, and this and, is and, and it gets hard moment. to control, and people could do all kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you have every I type that, of yeah. different cars. Everybody wants to have his own charger. Yeah. It depends on what brand you drive. This makes it a little more uh, complex. There's a lot more variables going on. Yes. At least with the industrial environment, it's all under your control. So yes. you know, it, it, I, I do, I do get that actually. Um, uh, but, but, um, and again, like you said, because you've got data being streamed from these pads, you can in real time, see both sides, what the efficiency is. So I'm guessing you can make changes yes. in like maybe things like, I don't know, the, the rise time, the fall times, those kind of things to then try and squeeze to give you maximum performance. Yeah, here in this system, this is our first system. Mm. We have all communication going through the vehicle. Mm. It has a nice co um, connection to the warehouse. It's all a canvas controlled, and this goes through the network. We have also a, a more systems, a three, a 10, 30, and so on. All these stronger models have all an Ethernet connection yeah. so that you can hook directly to the warehouse um, network. Yeah. You have access to the charger, uh, not only for reading the data, but also for maintenance and so on. So this has an even bigger access to the whole data and information flow. So, and this is... Is, is this sorry? Sorry, is this is this a, is this a, would you say this is one of the few solutions available? Or is this the only solution available for wireless charging like this with no, this no, efficiency? This is the first one. So That's we started with this one. It's the smallest. 
our little baby, one kilowatt. We have also here the um, stronger one to show. Oh, we have to have a look at that. So let's let's go around and have a look at yes. the uh, the much more powerful ones. I mean, still one kilowatt at ninety-two percent. I still can't get over that. So the the one kilowatt uh, gives you up to um, forty-one amps for cool. the batteries. This is the smallest one. So the, the, the biggest one with the 30 kilowatt, which are in the market, go around to 300 amps. So you can imagine what type of cable you would need to transfer this. All this is safe because you have the, the, of the coils. Course you can reduce the size of the cables as well. You know how much a cable costs? Yeah. And, and how, much you, how many losses you get in cables as well. Yes. So if you, like you say, if you, if you wire charge it and you keep the cable short, it's almost like the, 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 the power source is where the charging point is, and you come to it, and then the batteries have essentially got the shortest cable run to it. That's exactly. brilliant. Yeah, this is a, ah, the next yeah. uh, bigger system. It's a three kilowatt or 3.3 .3 kilowatt. We call it Move Air 03. This is the stationary side, which mm. will be mounted to the wall, to your cabinet. This is the power electronics. How many kilowatts, sorry? Uh, how many kilowatts is this, sorry? Uh, uh, this is 3.3 .3 kilowatts. 3.3, .3, yeah. So this is full power that you can get from a normal one-phase yeah. grid yeah. Uh, with 16 amps. Um, this is hooked directly to the primary coil. This mm -hmm. is, a, let's say, sending coil. Everything is connected. Nice uh, waterproof design. And this is included into the vehicle. The mm -hmm. robot, the forklift, the pallet jack, what you want. This is the secondary coil, receives the energy from here. So as soon as you approach them uh, from around uh, 30 millimeters and closer with a certain um, misalignment possible, then the, elect, uh, the energy flow starts immediately and the little onboard unit transfers it into the battery voltage. So this is the full system. You don't need an extra charger. Mm. And also this system runs to the high efficiency levels of 92%. 92%. Yeah. And as I said, here we have realized a new uh, communication system. We call it pad to pad link because here the pads directly communicate with a um, proprietary standard, mm -hmm. which means we don't interfere with other um, factory communication like Wi-Fi or so. And this makes it also safe in terms of um, access by um, third party. And I suppose um, as well, and, and again, like you say, you, need, you probably only need the one charger to maybe five or 10 of these because as robots are operating during their, they, when they're in the downtime, they can come in, have a quick charge, go out, and another one can take turns. Exactly. And, and so you, I suppose it helps make it more economical as well. Yeah, this is um, a very nice idea. As you said, we only need one, let's say, charging station, like a petrol station, mm -hmm. and every vehicle has its own. Mm -hmm. So we also sell it split so that the customer can really yeah. adapt it to his system. If you need maybe two charging points and uh, 10 vehicles, you can adapt you can it really that. to your system. I, I have to admit that when I look at this, this system, all I keep thinking about is how can I put that in my car <laughs> and put that in my garage. I, I really, I really do. I, I know, I know the focus here is industrial and, and, and automation in terms of like, uh, you know, like, a, like a robotic systems, but for me, this really screams EV. Anything, anything that moves is going to really benefit from something like this. Yes. So, so how? So, so so let's say, in terms of like the next sort of five years, what, what is it that you're most excited about in terms of where you see this being used? What is it you want to see most? Okay, so currently I'm focusing on my nice little <laughs> e, uh, forklift <laughs> yeah. truck. This would be great yeah. if I yeah. can bring it in here. And I think for the time being, it's also nice. Yes, you are right. The, it the, screams the, the EV. Automotive, it really does. Uh, yes. I mean, with a 92% efficiency, that's, that, it, it, that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. You don't get that from a normal charger, like, like a normal wired charger. You'll still struggle it's, to get those uh, kind of numbers. At least it's comparable. Yes. Yeah, that's and the this point. Is to our engineers, so this is really and a keep, big work. And yeah. keep in mind, a system like that, you never have disconnects. As, as in, like you don't have cables connecting and disconnecting, so you don't get cable wear down. You don't get uh, issues with resistance. No you know, marking. You, you, market, or, or you know, you know, you know, when cables mate and then they over time they become weaker and weaker and then issues like that. Yeah. It's completely safe because it isolates everything. You don't have exposed cables ever mm -hmm. being out so and then and then imagine a future where you just drive into your driveway a little pad built in finds it and just a little arm goes pop, 
and then it just starts charging. Okay, yeah, this is the uh, next step, yes. <laughs> so, this is one thing. So, very nice idea, yeah. I, but that's but the it, point, it's, it's, it's got so much potential. And it's also, it's incredible. I realized it by myself, I'm yeah. not a forklift truck driver, <laughs> but if you, for example, these standard chargers, which is also a very nice charger, but at least you have to pull these. And that's the issue. And this yeah. is, you really need a lot of force to pull it. Mm. This is not due to the charger, it's from the connector, but and here but you it, don't it, need it. But it needs that force because it's about safety and making sure that things are connected well. Exactly. But here, there's nothing at all. Here your robot can go 20 times, 30 times. When you have to connect and disconnect 20 times a day. That's going to start you wearing you out. You don't, uh, yes, yeah. you don't need or, to well, yeah, Or like you say, actually in my case, if I've ever pulled anything out hard, you'll end up scratching your skin or something, or you, you go back by a few feet and you fall no. over. This is also <laughs> from our division. It's a very nice charger. Oh no, this one's they, very, very they, nice. have, they have also um, <laughs> Realize that no sparking, no corrosion, this but, is really but, nice. But, but, it, but, but in generally speaking, big connectors are hard to pull out. And they do, and, yes. and, and like you say, they, they have a lot of issues. They're good in terms of like, I suppose they're much lower cost in the sense that you know, it's just a yes. cable, but the problem is, but having, actually having said, that, knows this, yeah. having said that, big cables are expensive and big cables wear down over time. And as you've clearly just demonstrated, you know, even cables have their own power efficiency issues. So honestly, this is an absolutely incredible product. And, I, I, I rarely get my mind changed about things very quickly. And I, 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 I'm not joking, about 20 minutes ago, I thought wireless charging in a vehicle will never happen. Now I'm thinking, huh, I want one of those. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm really impressed with that efficiency number. Yeah. That's, that's that, I think that is going to be the selling point, mm -hmm. honestly, yeah. of, of this system. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, because you know. For, for your car, for, then you need a little bigger pad. Yeah, but, but even uh, then, yes. but if, if it's overnight, it doesn't matter. Yeah because it can trickle charge overnight. You'll still get enough yeah. range to go to work the next day. Absolutely. All wireless, no effort at all. Yeah. So really I suppose good. So I suppose before we wrap this video up, I've got one more question for you. Absolutely. For those who are watching this video, if they are just as passionate as I am about this charging system, and want to get one of their vehicles as soon as possible. But if they want to know more about the solutions that you provide and how they can use this in their forklift trucks or their industrial systems, what would you recommend that they do? Um, to get more, to get know more about the system, so the best is to contact us directly. Mm -hmm. We have a nice um, approach in our homepage. Yep. We are here on the shows. Yep. Per, uh, in parallel, we are also another show on the SPS show. So we are promoting this uh, through the internet, through our sales force. We have a great team in all Europe, in the US, in Asia. It's a global um, sales and service network. So which also opens this up for global uh, companies or globally operating companies. It's not only a very small um, mm. regional market. So I think this would be the best way. Um, if you see the video, come into contact with us <laughs> or us. So, um, and uh, we will get you the perfect solution for your um, charging challenges, uh, your nice safe. projects, yes. Well, I can say it was an absolute pleasure and thank you ever so much for having us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.